It's the breakfast and Plus TV Africa time for off the press. Opuna Bonkotaria is with us this morning. He's a public affairs analyst. It's good to have you join us this beautiful Monday. Yes, good morning, Nancy. Good morning, Kofi. And good morning, viewers. Yes, Opuna Bonkotaria, you're looking really sharp and, uh, and lovely this morning. Taking up to you. <laughs> I have to do everything for Messi to fall. <laughs> Great to have you join us this morning. Okay, Thank so you. All right, let's take a look at the leadership newspaper this morning. And I start off with the bold caption. It talks about the Russia-Ukraine war. Anxiety over Nigerian students still trapped at Polish borders. That's what you find this morning on the leadership. Federal government asks stranded citizens to move to Romania. Hungarian borders, and uh, you also have Russian military puts nuclear weapons on high alert. Kyiv to hold talks with Moscow. That's what you find on uh, the top caption of the leadership. CBN warns as hard times trigger influx of fintech banks. Hmm. Uh, you also have the ACF or Hanese set justice equity as criteria for 2023 presidency. Court acts to order a probe of security votes spending. And uh, the President Mohamed Buhari's position on electoral acts reflects relationship with NAS. That's what the presidency is quoted to say. Adamawa community protest land encroachment by Cameroon and eight villagers and eight terrorists killed in Niger. And maritime workers to shut down Lagos on their pots over local content breach. Uh, that's the much we can take on the leadership this morning. And over to the Nigerian Tribune, which has been in circulation since 1949, these headlines. The lead story there, federal government confirms 4,000 Nigerians stranded in Ukraine demands their safe passage. With the following writers, Putin puts nuclear forces on high alert, world isolating Russia. European countries, U.S. to disconnect Russian banks from international financial system. BP to exit 20% of its shareholding from Russian oil firm. Those stories on page three of the Nigerian Tribune. More headlines, a special report, how 100 or how 14.37 billion Naira Nebza diverted funds stalled development at Kalba Kanu Free Trade Zones. And here... We go again. Special report how 14.37 billion Naira Nebza diverted funds stalled development at Calabar Kanu Free Trade Zones. APC Convention I am the candidate to beat Senator Damu and why governors, stakeholders want me. Quite interesting. Another one Omo Agege, Malami Ayade, Songolu, Umahi, others lead APC National Convention sub committee strike cost of imported vehicles to increase as trapped cargoes accumulate charges it's a really sad one uh, with the um the clearing and forwarding agents and all those uh, people on strike there uh, more stories from the nigerian tribune ogun oyo Oshun to suffer prolonged power outage lagos canoe train derails at jebba uh, pictures of those ones flooded social media over the weekend uh, father, son, 15 others feared killed in Niger. Ghana boys killed traditional ruler, 10 others in Benin. 2023 poll timetable, APC, PDP, SDP, ACF lawyers express worry, readiness for election. More stories from the Tribune. Appeal court ruling upsets NJC decisions on Onogen over 1,000 ex-judges. Judiciary leaders scramble to save council embarrassing reversals. Mm. And uh, last two stories from the Tribune. Constitution review reports. Reps begin debate. Voting on 68 recommendations tomorrow. And NDLEA intercepts Tramadol. 809,850 euro cash from Pakistan, Austria, Italy, at Lagos Airport. Those are the headlines coming on the front page of a Nigerian Tribune. Away from the Nigerian Tribune, let's take a look at the Punch newspaper this morning. And the header says, Russia-Ukraine war fuel scarcity may persist. All vessel face delay on sea. Tanker freight rate 
insurance premium climb in three days and more vessels avoid black and Mediterranean Sea over attacks. These are riders underneath the board header. National Assembly snobs southern governors exclude state pleas from 68 amendments. This is also another header this morning. While you have APC governors meet Tuesday, party names convention panel. Sanu lampoons the federal government, threatens the ground versities. Marketers comply losses on bad fuel to demand compensation. And a federal government directs fleeing Nigerians to head for Romania and Hungary. PDP alleges fraud in APC wins three rep seats. I take that again. PDP alleges fraud as APC wins three rep seats. Ogun police arrest five suspected quarters over cops killing. And VAT belongs to state, says LG, LASG and SANS. Uh, that's also another interesting caption. Federal government raked in 1.69 trillion naira company tax in 2021. That's according to the report from the National Bureau of Statistics. And reps set to publish audit queries as MDA's, MDA's shown invitations. Uh, these are the headlines we can take at this point in time. Let's go over to The Guardian uh, with this lead headline. Fuel scarcity worsens as an NPC fails on demand promises. Fuel scarcity worsens as an NPC fails on demand promises. And these riders to that headline. Marketers sell above 300 naira per litre. Ipman West hit as depot owners Moman operate at loss. And the CIMA calls government stakeholders to find solution. Air Nigeria to fly before June 2023, says Concession Commission. I don't know if we can take that to the bank. Air Nigeria to fly before June 2023, says Concession Commission. And despite assent, Nigerians still losing sleep over Electoral Act. Details on page three. Only 8,145 or 8,145,416 Nigerians are fully vaccinated against COVID-19. And Russia-Ukraine war, Putin puts nuclear deterrent on deterrent rather on special alert. And there's a picture, an interesting throwback picture on the front page of The Guardian uh, this morning showing um, uh, Putin together with uh, Samora Machel and um, the current uh, Zimbabwean president, Emerson Mnangagwa. Samora Machel is the one who was former husband to Mandela's wife, his last wife before he died. And he was a freedom fighter in Tanzania. And uh, it's quite interesting. From 1973 to 1977, Putin is said to have stayed in Africa, in Tanzania, training freedom, freedom fighters. And of course, that was uh, also the height of the Cold War era. Those are stories coming on the front page of the Guardian. All right, let's have a Kwanabon Kataria share his thoughts on uh, the papers this morning. Once again, thank you for joining us. We do appreciate uh, your time. Thank you, Messi. Okay, so um, I'd like to start off with the leadership. It talks about the anxiety of a Nigerian student still trapped at Polish borders. It's an honor thing. I mean, uh, they, are, they are coming from, fleeing from uh, war from Ukraine uh, as a result of uh, the madness of a man called Putin. And uh, you know, the airspace is closed, uh, the Ukrainian airspace is closed, and so they are finding it very difficult to return to Nigeria or to safe houses, to go to safe houses. And of course, if you have a child, you are a that you are sibling, or anybody related to them, you will be worried about the safety of such a person or persons. So it's quite normal, and of course, it's also the responsibility, the onus is on the federal government to ensure the safety of all Nigerians anywhere in the world. Although the federal government has been terribly in that respect, it has always advocated the responsibility. What you hear now is uh, they are making arrangements. Other countries have started, they have commenced the evacuation of their citizens. In Nigeria, we are full of uh, rhetoric. You hear they've made arrangements, they are talking. I listened to the 
the foreign affairs minister giving ultimatum to uh, Russia, making some uh, very strong pronouncements, threatening fire and brimstone. And I just laugh, you know, because just like Guaru said, uh, Biafra is like a drop in the ocean. We are even less than a drop in the ocean when it compares when it's compared to international politics. Nigeria is nowhere. We are just, <coughs> excuse me, being recognized for our oil contribution to the world, and that is it. What do we have? We don't even, we are not even contain our Boko Haram here, our bandits and so on, and the Minister for External Affairs is threatening fire and brimstone, quite laughable. So anyway, it is, it is okay for people to express their worries, no doubt about that, it is normal. But it should go beyond the expression of worry. You know, it has to do with the safety of uh, Nigerians. So how do they evacuate those persons from Ukraine or neighboring countries that are in danger? How do they evacuate them? What I believe we should be hearing right now is that social number of persons have been evacuated, social number of persons have been moved. Those are the kind of stories you want to hear. I'm not telling us that Nigerians are tribulating. It's normal that they will tribulate. What is the federal government doing? Because these persons are helpless. This person is quite unfortunate. It's part of their making. They did not invoke this war. They did not invite this war. They just found themselves like in a hot fire. So what is the federal government doing? This is the responsibility of the federal government. I'll call on Gwari, just as he keeps flying out, group trotting, let him also ensure that these Nigerians leave. The way he leaves Nigeria to other countries every now and then, he should also ensure. He should be used to the airspace. Gwari, I want to believe is more familiar with the airspace than even the pilots anywhere in the world. So he should be used to the airspace and should know how to bring these human beings, these Nigerians, back to Nigeria or take them to a place that is safe for them. The war is normal. I don't think that is news. That but, is not news. That is not news that Nigeria does. The news should be that the federal government, this is as a step the federal government has taken to ensure, not just talking, we want action. Not just talking, that the federal government have evacuated, has evacuated this number of persons and are still doing more. Just like what happened in South Africa when we had that genocidic uh, 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 saga, when air peace, I think that was why it was even recognized by the National Assembly, air peace, on his own volition, not that he uh, was asked by the federal government, went to South Africa to evacuate Nigerians. That is what we want to hear. That is what we want to see. But, um, so kind of Victoria, just before we move away to another story. Not to be talking like any other world. They just talk like world, other no. world leaders. You know, Open up on Kataria. Let's, let's share your thoughts on this one now quickly. Yeah. As just, you know, follow up to that before yeah. we move on to another uh, headline this morning. I mean, an another issue that the, the reports are trickling in and the complaints that we're getting is the issue of, uh, you know, Nigerians being discriminated, not necessarily Nigerians, but maybe, you know, Africans. And, and that also is a major issue. How, what can the government, the Nigerian government, do about this? Because right now, uh, we find out that this rescue mission that's going on, people are being transported, you know, uh, via train and other means, moving to those borders, but... Uh, Nigerians are, are being allowed. transported. You mean Nigerians are being transported? People are being moved. People, um, there's a rescue mission that's going on. Yeah. So, so the, the question here is whether or not it's the effort of the government or it's an individual effort. The point here is the fact that, you know, Nigerians, maybe Africans, are discriminated against at this crucial time. What can the government do? Is there anything that the Nigerian government can do about this? It's a question of perception. What, is, what else can you do about it? Are you going to if I'm going on a rescue mission, for example, God forbid it, uh, plus TV is on fire, and I move into plus TV to rescue, and I decide to rescue Kofi. Don't be angry. And I decided, <laughs> and I decide to rescue Messi and leave Kofi out. Why would anybody blame me for rescuing Messi? That's my choice. So if they, they are not interested in Africans, especially Nigerians, it's because of the way we are being perceived internationally. And they know that to the average African, life means nothing. You know, this, that is why I thought they are concerned. Because if you kill an American, or you injure an American, even if an American is adopted in Nigeria today, I bet you to take less than 24 hours for the American government to ensure his release, and he'll be flown out of the country. Back to America. It's not the case in Nigeria or in most African countries. So how you, they say it is how you present yourself that you shall be addressed. As far as they are concerned, Africans 
as my African governments are not interested in the lives and the security of their citizens. So why should other countries be interested? If they do it at all, it will be based on humanitarian grounds. It's a question of perception, notwithstanding the fact that they even see Africans as non-human beings. That's the truth about it. And that's why you have the segregation all over the world. They still see us as inferior human beings. So they go for the superior human being. And we are reinforcing that conviction. We are reinforcing that belief by the way we govern, by the way we treat our own citizens. So you don't blame them. I think what the government should do is this time to pull. Every day they kill us in, in Ghana. I don't want to say in somebody's country. They kill us in Ghana every day. And what do we do? Nothing. I've said it to you on air before. And if a Nigerian is killed in Ghana, then you kill 10 Ghanaians in Nigeria. Then at the end of the day, we'll go to the round table. People say, oh, no, I said my friend needs to continue. South Africa, the same thing. You keep, go and kill an, a Russian and see what will happen. Kill an American and see what will happen. Mm. All right, open you, the book. Open the book, It, 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 it is not... Yeah, open the book, sorry to interrupt, but it, it is not true that Nigerians are killed every day in Ghana. It, it, it is not true? Yes, sir. Yes, I know you defend. No problem. No, because uh, that would uh, uh, amount, uh, amount to misinformation. I mean, I no, I said, I said, I, I just gave an example, hypothetically. You're yeah. the one okay, that's hypothetically. Okay, all right, all right. So, 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 it's just, 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 you know? Oh, I mean, okay. I mean, I, I just, I, mean, I, I know, I, I know, I just want to point out for some people who might mis misinterpret yeah, you. I, I, I agree, don't worry. I think, okay, I know where you're coming from, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> even in South Africa, okay, let me use South Africa, at least there is no South Africa there. So, even in South Africa, we are killed every day. You understand what I mean? Now, Mr. Gutera, Nigerians are still yeah. not killed every day in South Africa. It is actually a history no, generalization. It is an example. Okay. Uh, example. Technically speaking, there is, no yeah. way they can, there is no way they can kill. There is no way they can kill every day. It's not possible. There is no way they can kill every day. It's not possible. And let me also say this: it is also important. There is no way a South African is also not killed in Nigeria. Probably is in and out. But the point I'm making is, deep for facts is my policy. That's not the point I'm making. Deep for facts is my policy. And when we do that, then we will not respect each other. We'll go to around the round table for a discussion. We respect each other. Not so, 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 so what, what, what you're saying is... So, so what, what you're saying is, is if... if uh, 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 it's just, I'm using this to just bootstrap the, my point, the question she asked. You know, it's an aside. Mm. I'm not really talking about killing but, but right I, now. I, I think we I'm should, we should use this platform. Mr. Why, why I, I, I believe, Mr. Mr. Gutierrez, I, I believe, I believe you, 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 you're still a, a messenger of peace because I know, I know that um, you also are, uh, uh, you know, highly, highly respected yeah, member that, of the community yes, that, yeah, I mean, with, with yes, love, uh, I, titles, I mean, awards, and all that. Peace. I mean, yes. justice of the peace. But yeah, yes, the best yes. Sorry, get justice of the peace. Is the one derived from is the one derived from war. That's the best peace. Yes. All right. That's All right. So, so, so let, let's, let's move on. Let's move on. Let us not deceive. Let us not deceive ourselves. Yes. So, so, so I, I believe you're For not. Me, if I'm walking and if I slap <laughs> you, if I slap you today, I walk and you walk away. I'll slap you tomorrow. I, I would like. I believe you're not saying. You, you're, today, you're not saying that if if if, if Nigerian is targeted. Even if I can beat you, I'll be scared of slapping you. Tomorrow. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But I believe. I believe you. I believe you're not saying that if a Nigerian is targeted, um, in 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 South Africa, for instance. Um, and and you know is killed that um, Nigeria should look for any South African in Nigeria and also kill that person. I believe that will be uh, the the right no, message no, to pass no, on national TV. Saying, no, Kofi, Kofi, yes. let, me, let me say this. So, Kofi, let me so say this. I, 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 want, I want you to correct that impression Africa. that maybe some people may I, have. I, I am saying, no, allow me to talk now. You have asked the question: Where a Nigerian is killed in South Africa? Jonathan, Kofi, if I come to your house and give you a cup of tea. And you come to my house, what is expected? I should respect that guest, isn't it? Isn't it? Uh -huh. So if a Nigerian is killed in South Africa, I am not saying Nigeria is going to kill South Africa, but don't look for a South African and love him, that's all. Okay, 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 let's, uh, let's, let's move on, Mr. Uh, but, but like you said... So, no, like, you know, you know, 
you know some long, long can lead to death. Nairobi and doing that. You understand that? Yes, so yes, but, yes I, I do, I do. But like you said, Africa. but like you said, you are justice okay. of the peace, and uh, you. You you're preaching peace, and I'm sure you're not. Uh, I can I know you very well. You're a peaceful man, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, very good, very good. Yes, peaceful yes. man, you you are a peaceful man. A justice of the peace. Yeah, and I'm sure you, you, you know, I know you're not encouraging you people to take the law into their man. hands. <laughs> yeah. All right, Mr. Um, Jerry. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's move yeah. on. Um, um, uh, not a few papers uh, uh given attention to the 2023 uh general elections. Of course, um. Yesterday, we had the, the Independent National Electoral Commission uh, finally publishing the long-awaited and long-expected um, timetable for the 2023 general elections. Um, let, let's go with the, the story from the Tribune, uh, the Nigerian Tribune, that says, uh, 2023 poll timetable, APC, PDP, SDP, ACF, you don't know the political party, lawyers express worry and readiness for election. Y your thoughts on... On, on this timetable that has been released following Mr. President's signing of the bill? Well, it, it, it's a bit of a paradox. When you say express worry, then in another breath you say readiness. It, 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 nevertheless, um, there's something they, they can do and perhaps better. They express worry, especially the APC, because a lot of those who have this uh, and, and ambition are already in office and are still in office. And you know, they are mandated going by the, uh, after the APC um, uh, constitution, they are supposed to resign at least 30 days to the primaries. Now the timetable is out March 26th. They are going to have that uh, convention. Then after that, I think. Hello, Mr. Victoria, are you there, please? Okay, uh, we, we seem to have um, a bit of a, um, a connection issue, but we'll try our best to get back to open a boy in Kutaria. Uh, Mr. Victoria, are you there, please? Mercy, um, it's, it's, it's quite an interesting one, and I do agree with him with the paradoxical nature of that headline, you know, expressing worry and expressing readiness at the same time. But I'm sure if we read that, we'll get, we'll get to see that um, we have some parties expressing worry and some parties expressing readiness. But um, to, 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 okay, wait we, till we have Upuna Boy and Kutaria back on the line. Mr. Kutaria, apologies uh, for that. It happens in these days. Maybe until the 5G comes on stream, we may have to <laughs> contain this. But please continue with the point we're making. are in office and they want to use the power of You know what it means? Now, some of them, let's say, for example, the minister, how they resign, they might not have access again to the president as they wish to influence certain things. The services will not answer their calls anymore. This is the tradition in Nigeria. It is uh, a main source that many fathers wash her out is as if you're a failure and you'll become an orphan, you know? So that is why they are really worried, because they want to use the power of incumbency to rig the election, which might be a little bit difficult, really, considering the new electoral acts. It might be a little bit difficult. Now, these other ones, too, are equally worried. I wonder why PDP, PDP is expressing readiness, because PDP is not in office. That's the truth about it. So let's say the governors now, for example, if a governor wants his lieutenant to contest, it doesn't bother. All he needs to do is tell the lieutenant to resign and will still be funding that lieutenant, will still be giving him money. Most of them at the national level are not, are not sure of that, especially when you look at the body language of Mr. President. They believe in that you are your own. So start it. You are your own. That is their belief. If I'm on my own, I should still be in office to steal enough money and also use my office to influence the election. If I cannot influence the election, at least influence the electorate. That is why those in APC are worried. But those in PDP, that's why they say worry and express readiness. Those in PDP and Co are ready. They are ready because they don't need. If a governor wants you to compete to be the next to succeed him, if whether you're in office or out of office, it doesn't matter, he's going to sponsor you. Oh so God. they are ready. <laughs> Sorry? 
It won't be a bad idea. Sorry? It won't be a bad idea. No, Kofi, I know, I know. <laughs> Kofi, even they tell you to be the president, you'll be ready for that. I know you. You know, Kofi likes good life. I know Kofi so well. So he'll be ready. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> so that is it. You know, that's why you say some are worried and some are ready. That is the truth about it. All right, uh, let's also take a look at uh, the Punch newspaper this morning. And quickly on the Punch, it talks about uh, the constitutional review that's ongoing and the fact that uh, the National Assembly snobs sadden governors and excludes state pleas from 68th Amendment. Hello? That, yes, so I, I'm, I'm saying let's take a look at this now. Uh, the co ongoing uh, yes. constitutional review, you have... 68 amendments, some things that have been considered, been recommended for review. However, with these, uh, the issue of state police has been excluded. And at a time where the country is faced with a lot of, you know, security challenges, and some persons have actually proposed that state security, <coughs> if state actually controlled their security architecture, then it would go a long way in curbing some of the issues that we're facing. Not necessarily waking up, you know, to a world without no crime, I mean, without crime and uh, troubles, but to some extent it would probably be reduced, especially when you talk about the numbers that we have. If you look at, you know, the number of the police force, you look at the Nigerian army and what have you, but let's stay with the police force now. Over 211 million people and uh, what number of police do we have to please this population? So one would be thinking that, you know, having a state police would be a priority for this constitutional review. Well, it depends on your own POV, your point of view. Is state police the panacea to uh, the insecurity in this country? Your guess is good as mine, especially when you have governors suffering from narcissistic personality disorder. <laughs> Won't it be abused? You see, that is the fear. Won't it be abused? You know, because even when a governor or a commissioner of police is quite close to a governor, you can see the abuse. So that otherwise state police is the principle in the presidential system of government. Even the judiciary the natural fact, which you have the Supreme Court of the state, then you have the Supreme Court of the country. You know, it's a very process. But now you see where even judges are bought. Judgments are procured. And that is the worry. I can tell you, yes, we saw it. It's a constitutional requirement. It's a presidential it's a requirement in the presidential system. I agree. But are Nigerians right enough? Are they civil enough? If you you give a governor. There are so many of them. If a governor will have a state police, in most cases, that state police will even have a conflict with the federal police. It's a very clear, like in America. A state police cannot leave his area of jurisdiction to another state unless he has to inform, it has to be with the consent, the premature of. Yes, even when a criminal leaves a state to another place, you must inform. Or you bring in the head here. Yeah. Messi, Kofi, you see that your station. Samuel, the moment you hear anything that is negative, will send the state police to you and nothing will happen. Because he's in charge. If the state police commissioner says no, he will be kicked out immediately. Just like you have with the National Assembly and the State House of Assembly and so on. If you see judges go come in and beg it, you say, I know of a governor who will ask is ugly, ugly, not even a okay, ugly. Okay, no. So call the chief judge. Open up on Kataria. So you, we I, have to let you go at this point. You know, but you know, I, 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 I'm starting it. Then you now have a state. This is the way of this, like this, so that the clergy of what I have to do will penetrate your mind and not the capital of judge. It is a requirement in the federalism, in the presidential system of government. But my dear, it will be abused by this character. We have to let you go at this point now. It Thank you so abused. much. Open up, Bonkataria. We have to go. We're really out of time and we're being prompted to leave right now. Thank you so much for being part of the show. And, and I'm sure that we have more time to talk about this. Right.
So coffee. Please, 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 any day, any time, any day. <laughs> very interesting, very interesting how we put a book. But just before, I, I like to drop this slide. Yeah. It feels like, it's like saying that democracy, we shouldn't practice democracy because we're not, because if you look at it, really, are we really practicing? I mean, is democracy uh, really practiced to its capacity the way it should be in Nigeria? That, that's and the, that's and the, we can't that's constantly make an excuse that we shouldn't practice democracy uh, because we're not doing the, the real thing. And so we're still here saying it's a nascent democracy. I mean, we're growing, we're still developing. I'm just that's, thinking that's that we can't constantly, constantly make all of these excuses, uh, you know, for state police and not allowing state to control the architecture. Yes, indeed, Mercy. And um, up next, uh, we'll look at what happened today in history. And of course, the Russian advance or invasion of Ukraine and advancing on Kikhev and Kiev. We have a guest coming up after that segment right here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Stay with us.